going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation, and basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry, I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and, um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number 5127 to set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy shit. So they they just gave they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. Social engineering. This is what we're looking at. Was Field McConnell a victim of social engineering? When we're going to look at it, we're going to go through a timeline. We're going to see from the time when he was an airline pilot to what changed his life to create him to what he is now. And the person that I believe, willingly or unwillingly, created the situation we have now. Because now we have a man sitting in a cell that has been gang stalking and cyber stalking women for years, including his own sister. But the fuel for that fire came from outside and was brought into him. This is what we are going to start looking at and realise the importance of the adjutant that created this. I know we're probably raking over old coals here, but this is important. You see here, September the 12th, 2001, the day after 9-11, Mr McConnell was approached by a local newspaper for his expert witness since he was a commercial airlines pilot and he was well known for that. He talks about his military graduations etc and also the fact that there are plenty of people that would have some rudimentary understanding of how you would fly a 757 or a 767. So here he is stating that he believes that it's Osama bin Laden and that the planes could have been hijacked. This was in 2001. We know in 2003 he was declared bankrupt. But we won't get into that to another day. What I'm more interested in is what happened in 2006. So that's where we are now going to head into 2006. So let's look at what happened in 2006. Here we have Phil McConnell's legal complaint against Alpa. So here we have in November of 2006, he went on sick leave. So we know in 2006, late 2006, he was having problems. This is the collective bargaining between Northwest Airlines and its pilots and could order a pilot who was on sick leave for more than 60 days to submit to a medical exam. So there's another situation going on here. See, in January 2007, McConnell had been on sick leave for more than 60 days. 
and he'd refused to undergo a medical examination. Mr. McConnell objected to taking examination and sought assistance from Alper. Now, this is where all this union stuff comes in. It's very important. And he was, uh, as we can see here, you know, he was lying. We've got all the evidence in there. But what I want to take our attention to, more importantly, is this line here. And it's regarding his complaint. And in here, he's regarding the QRS-11 gyro chips. Now, this is very important. There's no mention of the uninterruptible autopilot, but there's every mention of the QS QRS-11 gyro chips. So here's the actual complaint that he put in. Now, as we go through this complaint, we shall see as we dilly-dally down the line, we get to number 26, where it starts off. He falsifies safety flying records, and so, so he's pointing out some of the safety reasons. But it's number 27 that's the most important one to look at. The information itself was not in dispute in Boeing, as Boeing had recently paid $650 million settlement to the United States Department of Justice. This had nothing to do with the QRS-11 chip. This was everything else to do with a racketeering thing that was going on. Well, I will prove all that again in a later date. So we can see here that he is going on about the QRS-11 gyro chips. There's no mention of the uninterruptible autopilot. Again, I have to reiterate that. So there's 28, and there is 29. So we have all that information there. That's his complaint. This is the actual complaint that went in there. Here are the two newspaper articles, one from March the 9th of 2007, uh, the police that covered up. Now, he hasn't spoken since 2001. The last time in 2001, he's talking about how he believes it's Osama bin Laden. Now in 2007, he's saying all of this. Now he's talking about a website here. And as you go down a bit further on in this uh, whole uh, page, you'll see something quite clear here. Yes, many of McConnell's allegations are outlined in the internet posting on Hawks Cafe. Well, there's only one person on Hawks Cafe, and that's David Charles Hawkins. Again, this one was written on March the 13th, 2007. Again, this is McConnell saying about flying, etc., He's gone against everything he said in 2001 and and he's sort of combination information published in the lawsuit at the Hawks Cafe. Is. So what lawsuit is he on about? And this is important as well because don't forget, they're talking about the QRS-11 gyro chips. Now this is the lawsuit and it was created February 27th, 2007 in uh, Dakota and it's about racketeering. It's about RICO. It has nothing to do with QRS-11 chips or safety issues. So he's talking about racketeering between Boeing Company and airline pilots. If you ever wanted evidence to show you exactly what's going on here, here we have what I would call the smoking gun. It's come to my attention over the last 96 hours that a QRS-11 gyro chip gyroscope the military application exists. I understand that at least 96 passenger aircraft have been illegally modified with the QRS-11 missile guidance technology, <coughs> and at least 27 gyro chips equipped flight boxes have been exported without licenses. Oh, this is a real bombshell, because what I want you to really tell you is the devil in the detail. 2006, 10th of December 2006, this was done. And it will be linked below. I'll link all these things below so you can read for yourself with your own eyes. McConnell didn't know nothing about it until 2006. That's why McConnell was never a 9-11 person until he lost his job. But now he's a tinfoil wearing hat individual courtesy of one David Charles Hawkins. I will prove it even further as we go deeper into this complete rat's nest. Here we have David Hawkins, March the 5th, 2007. Here are the two articles showing that Boeing has installed explosives behind doors on all of its passenger aircraft and missile gyroscopes. QRS-11 in number of flight boxes, therefore. This is the man responsible for the creation of Field McConnell. This is the man that fed 
this insanity to him. Ugh. Here it gets even worse. Anthrax Rock, if you're curious, 11, Year of the Snake. 9-11 Disclosure Blog, which is one of theirs. Hawks Cafe has traced possible Year of the Snake developments in 2001 when Boeing passenger aircraft was apparently modified with triaxial gyroscopes, QRS-11 gyroscopes to support precision delivery of rocket fueled incendiary bombs or weaponized anthrax for Lansdowne technology clients in Ottawa, Quebec, China, France and Iraq. If you ever wanted to see insanity, you're reading it there and then. And this is all coming from the twisted, warped mind of one David Charles Hawkins. This is the man that created the whole nonsense that created the so-called whistleblower, Phil McConnell. Phil McConnell was not a whistleblower. Phil McConnell knew nothing about QRS-11 chips until he was told by Hawkins. Hawks Cafe, Clinton Marcy Patty Shop, Burlingame. From Hawks Cafe, here again, from Phil McConnell and David Hawkins, Forensic Economics, Cyber Security, Counterintelligence, of all things now. They love to give names to themselves, don't they? Dear Prime Minister, Hawks Cafe believes that former patent lawyer with Rose Law, Hillary Clinton, and the SES founder, Christine Marcy, authorized agents of the US Justice Prisoner and Alien Transportation System to use electric shock devices. There we have it, evidence that this is all made up nonsense and yet they have been pumping this out on a regular basis. I'm going to give you now a recap of all of this to explain a bit further. If you want to know <coughs> who the real culprit is, it's David Charles Hawkins. Without him, Phil McConnell would not be where he is today. Without him, Phil McConnell would not have been a whistleblower. Without him, Phil McConnell wouldn't believe he was this person that he was not. And of course, when David Hawkins left, it created a void. And what happens when these voids appear is somebody else fills that place. Somebody else who has to be very similar to, if not identical to, the person beforehand. So who would replace David Charles Hawkins with his lunacy well, now we get to the crux of it. This is the replacement. This guy filled the void because he is exactly the same as Hawkins. In reality, McConnell's problems were brought about not because of himself, but because of the people he associated with, and more importantly, the man that ultimately holds key responsibility for the predicament that Mr. McConnell is in is David Charles Hawkins, because without him, he wouldn't be sitting where he is today. That is fact. Also, more interesting, is when we start looking at Mr. Hawkins a bit more and start delving into some in little dark areas, at least real, real important questions.